once again, you who didn't ask for this, no. and yet, here are these two fools are. Yep. I'm MB Elkins. And I'm Joe Steele, and this is MB and J Movie Madness. And today, we're going to do, this is part one of two, yep. of Joe and I's favorite comedies. Now, this first batch, we have decided to talk about our top five favorite comedies all the way up until 1989. So everything pre-1990s is yep. going to be our top five favorite comedies. Absolutely. You start. And I will start it. We're going to go old school here, people. We're going to go Abbott and Costello, <laughs> Naughty 90s. Ooh. Now, this is actually earlier. It's kind of in the middle of their career. Okay. And this one actually has all their iconic sketches. Like, if you look online, oh, who's on first? It's actually taken from this film. All right. I thought, didn't there with a bunch of sketches and they made the movie? No, 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 no. This was actually had a whole overall theme okay. about them getting on to, it's based in the 1890s. It sounds like a bad bad porno named the naughty nine days mm. like it just sounds wrong <laughs> but it's it, it's about them and they fumble their way onto this old boat that's going down the river mm -hmm. and they end up getting involved in a gambling scheme and okay. some other crap happens and they're pretty much running for their lives by the end of the film this is one of the ones i haven't seen because my number uh the first one of my favorite is also an Abbott costello awesome but everyone knows i love my monster movies Monsters. so every halloween ever since i was a kid i have to watch Abbott and costello and frankenstein because you know the difference between right and wrong I know, I it's do. It's a very good yes. movie. And, and it's fantastic because you get uh, Lon Chaney Jr. back oh, as the Wolfman. You get so Bela good. Lugosi back as Dracula. Yep. Glenn Strange, who did a couple of the 40s Frankensteins, yep. is Frankenstein's monster in there. And all three of those famous universal monsters are chasing Abbott and Costello. That was like around. my favorite thing about Abbott and Costello because when they got someone from that period, they actually got them. Yes. It was like yeah. Scooby-Doo, how they would always like the Harlem Globetrotters and stuff. But at least in movies with yes, real actors. Exactly. I, I awesome. adore, for 1948, that movie has some quick-witted, fast <laughs> comedy <laughs> that, that, so that holds up to today. Absolutely. Is that the one with the Invisible Man, or is that a different one? At the very end, the Invisible Man comes That's in. That's what I thought. That's yes. what I thought. Okay, next Which one on my good. list is It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Very good. I love that movie. Better than its remake, Rat Race. Way better than its remake. That movie is just, when they're going down the road and all of a sudden more and more people are are going. <laughs> I'm just, what is it? My favorite moment, though, is when um, I like Spencer Tracy. Spencer Tracy, the cop, he's just, his wife is arguing with him about his daughter, his daughter's arguing with him about his mother, <laughs> and now all of a sudden they turn on him, and he's just like, I don't know, this is my last day before I retire. <laughs> and he tries and steals the money. That's the freaking best. Oh my gosh. My number two is going into 1976. Now, me and my brothers both grew up watching this movie. Mm. Everyone grew up watching mm. Gene Wilder and Willy Wonka. Now, there's a second movie that I grew up watching on Gene Wilder, and that's Silver Street, <laughs> 1976. It's the first movie that he works with uh, Richard, Richard Pryor. Pryor. Richard Pryor comes oh, in yeah. like an hour into the movie. But just the whole thing of the love story and the adventure and the comedy of getting kicked on and off the train is fantastic. I adore it. <laughs> To this day, me and my brother still want to take a train travel trip, and it's because of Silver Streak. I love when he gets kicked off every single time. Son of a... No. <laughs> That's like my favorite. And Henry Mancina did an amazing score for that as oh, well. Oh, it is too. a lot of fun. It I is a lot of fun. I adore Silver Streak. All right, first. next one on my list is... Okay, they've done... It was originally a TV show, and then they made a movie. And then they made another TV show. And did you know they made another movie? It's The Odd Couple. Nice. But we're going to bypass all those other ones, and I'm going to focus on the Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau in the okay. 1960s. That movie is so funny. It's very quick. <laughs> it's very... The wit back and forth yeah. be between it. And it was very bold... Because, honestly... I, it, I haven't seen it in years. I have to go and revisit it. I own it, oh. but I, I it literally... Well, they, the way they go years. back and forth, if you were to see it now, they wouldn't feel like roommates. They would feel like a gay couple. Because one of them... <laughs> One of them's constantly cleaning everything, like they're playing poker, and they're like, what smells like bleach? And they're like, he wipes the cards. He's like, okay, I'm done. Like, what? Like, the whole thing is like, if you're smoking, use the tray, use the tray. Fall in with a vacuum cleaner. Yes. Oh, it's great. Nice, nice, nice. It's fun. My number three is a very famous, campy comedy from 1985, a movie that did horribly in theaters, really? but eventually it caught on hmm. as the years went by, hmm. and that's Clue. Oh, man, I love that movie. Oh, my God, I love Clue. I didn't know it With flopped Tim, in theaters. It did, and they had the alternate endings yeah. that came in, too, but, like, Tim Curry alone <laughs> is Wadsworth. I mean, that 
a, a Madeline Kahn is in there and Michael McKean. It's such a great, oh, yeah. amazing cast of just these seven, uh, eight characters so much fumbling fun. about the mansion. Tim Curry, the last ten killed. minutes of that movie are my favorite. But yeah. it happened over here. And no, it's 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 if, if anyone out there has never seen Clue, you need to. You're doing yourself a disservice. Go find it immediately. That's it, my third favorite. That's a lot of fun. My fourth is oh, gotta go Mel Brooks for one of them. Uh, I already know what this is gonna be. Uh, it's Spaceballs. <laughs> Because he's such a Star Wars I, fan. I, I, I'm more of a Star Trek fan. But Spaceballs makes fun of everything from Alien to Star Wars to Star Trek to Planet That's of the true. Apes. John Hurt is back in there and the <laughs> Xenomorph comes out of the game and starts singing Hello, apparently, baby. Apparently, he like, apparently Mel Brooks was friends with John Hurt. And okay. it was just like, he asked him, he's like, hey man, I'm totally making fun of this. Would you be willing to do this film? And he's like, I'll do it again. Well, and it's even better. George Lucas, because he contacted George Lucas to make fun of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And George Lucas is like, you can make the movie, but you can't merchandise. So okay. in the film, he makes fun of him by going, the money of the film, merchandising. Yeah. And like makes fun of him. And there's no merchandise for the film. Aww. They don't. They can't. They can't. Oh, I know. But they use George Lucas's is. sound studio to mix the audio there and everything. It's amazing. My number four is one of my favorite comedies that I grew up on. This is the first ah. movie I remember when I was a kid I watched and I laughed so hard I actually peed my pants. Really? This this movie, first time I saw it, when I was a little kid, I actually peed my pants. That's amazing. And that was Plain Strings on Oh, man. With That's Steve such a Martin. Classic. Yes. And John Candy. John Candy. It's just that road trip movie. It's the ultimate road trip comedy of errors. Oh, and it's yeah. also uh, one of the most epic Thanksgiving movies. Oh, Every <laughs> Thanksgiving you have to watch Plain Strange Animals. Absolutely. But just the two of them together, their chemistry together, you know, very much candy. kind of like odd couple. Yes. One's a slob and yes. one is completely mild mannered oh, and totally. slowly like <laughs> getting unhinged. <laughs> it's fantastic. And and I Peed my pants. You laughing so laughing hard. so hard in that movie when I was a little kid. And I remember my parents <laughs> watching with me, and I had to run out of the room as I was peeing and trying to get to the bathroom. Ah! I was like seven or eight years old. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> What's your last? One? All right, my last one on my list is Dirty <laughs> Rotten Scoundrels. Yes, more Steve Martin. I love Steve Martin, but even more important, Michael Caine. Michael Caine. That movie is so Rick. Everything... Oh my gosh! <laughs> I showed that to a friend of mine. He hadn't really seen a lot of classic comedies. Like. Okay, you have to watch Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. And yes. just the just the turn of uh -huh. that movie. Okay. They're just terrible human beings the whole time. No, they are. And you're like, Fantastic. I don't want to vote for either no. one of you, but this is just too amazing. <laughs> oh, that movie's awesome. Oh, it's incredible. Uh, 1989 uh, was my fifth favorite movie that predates the 1990s and by the skin of his teeth it got in and this is Tom Hanks's uh, comedy The Birds yes a lot yes, of people yes. give this movie crap but Joe Dante I thought did something very special <laughs> um, was showing the fears and the paranoia of suburbia where a mild mannered man taking his week off yeah. from work just sitting at home starts to suspect that his neighbors are serial killers <laughs> Is he right or is he not? And how him and all the rest of the crazy neighbors start to overly spy on these people. Oh the gosh. Burbs is a classic yeah. comedy of um, suburbia turned upside down. Well, and I love how Tom Hanks looks at the end of that movie. He just looks totally fried. He's just like... Aah. Physically, because he, he just... survives with, like an explosion. <laughs> it's just like... It's I, such I a great movie. That movie. So it was very hard for us to pick just five of yeah. all these great comedies before 1990. So quickly, we're going to do an honorable mention. Absolutely. And it just happens to be that the same actor stars in both of Absolutely. ours. Absolutely. And that's Eddie Murphy. Because my favorite, if I had to have a sixth one, yep, yep. it is from 1988, and that's Coming to America. <laughs> and Coming to America is absolutely epic. Oh, yeah. And what is yours? And I believe mine's 1983, and it's trading places yeah. with yes. Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. I Absolutely. love the whole concept of a rich man getting his whole life turned around. And then they totally flip all for a dollar bet. There you like, go. Like, that's just ridiculous. And I just, Coming to America was so great for me because Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall playing all these different characters. Oh, yeah. Back to back to back with the makeup effects phenomenal. Absolutely. In there. So it's like the barbershop scenes alone are some of like comic, <laughs> comic legend stuff. Absolutely. So those are our top movies of older comedies yep. predating 1990. Our next video will show 1990 and on Absolutely. of our favorite comedies. So other than that, what should people do, Joe? Well, if you like what you're hearing, hit that button down there and subscribe. It's, it's like, it's, I'm going to put it on the screen. It's going to be somewhere. But you should do it. You should just stop talking and you let these people get what they're going to do. Okay. Stop watching us now. Bye.